There were no fish this year in Green Bay. Notre Dame Bay was a blank. So was Bonavista Bay, Trinity Bay, Conception Bay, and all along the southern shore. But when you rounded Cape Pine, it was a different story. Just look at what the boys are bringing in here at Peters River. Some Newfoundland fishermen didn't see this much fish all summer. In Peters River, it was just another trap hog. Up she goes. The fish here are bagged and towed in, then winched up the side of the cliff. It's not the easiest place in the world to unload your catch. There's no harbor on the shore, the seas are often rough, and the whales can be a proper nuisance. But there's usually lots of fish around Peters River, and that's the important thing. And what kind of catches are you bringing in every day now? Well, 20, 30,000, the fellas brings in more, and more brings in less that way, like. I don't know how much, mostly, uh, Anywhere from three to four, I thought we, we have over 300,000 ganders. Just fellas have more than that. That's just, I'm thinking they have, you know. That's pretty good for early in July, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. So very seldom is a failure here. Not, not that I, since I went there, it's not a real failure, eh? So you haven't got much of a harbour, but you'll put up with that yeah, because there's fish there. We don't the mind that. That's, that's why we're getting the fish here, I suppose, you know. It's just foggy weather, but uh, yeah. you don't mind that. That's good for the fish, too. We don't mind the fog. That's, that's the kind of weather we like. So at the end of July or early August, that'll be it for the year? Yeah, that'll be it, yeah. For the trap fish, right? Do you keep going what? that, then? Yeah, no, the not that much. You might jig, jig a bit for winter or something like that, you know. But it's a hard place here, eh? Yeah, Once the wind gets over on the western side, you can't get in. You'll have your money made by then, anyway. I hope so. But Peters River wasn't the only part of St. Mary's Bay where the fish were plentiful this summer. We heard there was a lot of fish in Gaskers, too. Gaskers is a quiet little place. Some people here do a bit of farming and gardening, some find work away. And some look to the sea for their livelihood. This crew hasn't been together for very long. Most left the fishery years ago when they were youngsters. Discouraged by low prices and a failing fishery, they sought work elsewhere. Some worked at construction in St. John's in Toronto. Others spent time in the iron mines of Labrador and the oil fields of Alberta. And now they're back home in the fishing boat again. On the other side of the wharf, Pet Dobbin and his crew. As you can see, they've been doing pretty well with the fish. In fact, they're the highliners here in Gaskers. Pet, like many other young men, worked away for a while, but he came home in 59 and has been fishing ever since. Though tempted to leave in the lean years, he stuck it out, and now he's proud he did. Deciding to come back to the fishery after years of working at other jobs wasn't an easy decision for some of the fellows in this boat. They remember the uncertainty, the hard work, the poor prices, the times they had to dump their catches. But hopefully, these days are over. They're back. It's good to hear the song of the old engine again. But most important of all, it's good to know that there's lots of fish just a gunshot from shore. But just how good was the fishery here in Gaskers this year? It was still early when we visited, only the 9th of July. Already Pat Dobbin and his crew had a lot of fish landed. It was shaping up for a good year. Well, Pat, I believe you've had a pretty good year, and the year's not even over yet. Yeah, a pretty good year, yeah. How much do you figure you got now? Oh, well, we're going to order 400,000 a night. Yeah. So by the end of the year, what do you think you'll have? You're going for a million this year? <laughs> I like to. Yeah. <laughs> I like to, all right. But it is a good year, though. Oh, it is a good year, yeah. yeah. Keep going where it's going. Well, we got another month to go, yeah. yeah. Another couple hundred thousand, all right. So you could end up with six or seven hundred thousand oh, pounds yeah. of fish. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a lot of fish for a small boat in a short while. Of course now it's no fortune, for the profits are spread out among quite a few people. To some, the cod trap is a clever invention, which revolutionized the Newfoundland fishery, enabling fishermen to practically farm the ocean. To others, the cod trap is a curse, chaining fishermen to the shore. Yet whatever the critics say about this method of fishing, there can be no doubt that when the fish do come in close to shore, it's hard to beat the cod trap for efficiency and productivity. Mike, how much is that you got today, do you figure? Well, about 20 towers, I guess. It's a good day's pay, isn't it? Good day's pay. Yeah. How much out of this trap now? You didn't get much tonight, but you got more this morning, I believe. We well, had around uh, 16 towers this morning. Yeah? 16 towers. That's a good half. Good how long has it been going like that now? <coughs> well, it's very good all along, you know. Yeah. Now this past couple, of, last week's been very good. Yeah. Over the years, there have been efforts to improve the old Newfoundland cod trap. It's been modified and redesigned with debatable results. One of the main faults is that the fish, if they're lucky or clever, can escape by finding their way through the doorway or over the top. Some years ago, Japanese gear technologists came up with a trap which had a trickier funnel-shaped doorway and a roof all designed to keep the cod swimming around as permanent residents. On the day we were out, this crew hauled a Newfoundland trap and then a Japanese trap. And then is this your, the Japanese trap, is Yeah, it? Japanese. Do you find it a bit harder to haul or is it a well, better trap? No, the hardest part of hauling is when tri tripping up, eh? Once yeah, you get it tripped up, when you got it hauled. I see. Yeah. Well, what's the big difference? There's a roof in it, I suppose. That's the main difference, isn't Yeah, that's the main difference, yeah. And what and does that mean? Does it mean well, she's six fathom on the water, so the fish can't get out. But that was, it was a ten fathom trap, well, she had to be no roof. And how, how has this been working for you now, the past while? Well, this is the first year I've used it. So. You like it better than the other one? Or? I've seen it in the other trap. Yeah. Easier work. What's that, Mike? Uh-oh, some of the fish were about to escape. All because I interrupted Dennis and his work. It was high time for me to shut up. From then on, I just watched as they straightened everything out and began to dip in the fish. A good haul, a good load of fish, another good day on the water here in St. Mary's Bay. And so this summer the fish came to Peters River and Gaskers and Riverhead and to other places in St. Mary's Bay. The crews did well. It was heartening to find at least one place in Newfoundland where the fishery was successful. Plenty of fish, fair prices, strong markets, and no trouble to sell the small fish. Load and go, back and forth. The fishermen of Gaskers didn't stop much this summer. They couldn't, the fish were there, the season was short. There was a lot of fish to be caught, a lot of money to be made. Everyone was working hard, everyone was happy. Except for one elderly man who was on the Gaskers wharf from dawn till dark. There was a sad, wistful look in the eye of Martin Meehan. Oh, he was glad there was lots of fish. He was just sorry his fishing days were over. He wanted to be on the water with the younger crowd. Do you miss not being on the water? Oh, my sonny boy, sir. I'm here every morning at 5 o'clock. Yeah. 
quite a few changes since you started. Oh, my son, with some changes, even in this little cove here, because it was all, all, all flake langers and everything here on this when I was fishing. I had to wheel it up with a wheelbar, rub right on top of the cliff. I suppose you had to make the fish then? Make it, salt it and make it, and wash it and salt, or salt it and wash it and make it then. And then you had to look at, you had to look for the fellow up above the sun. <laughs> yeah. This, they're having a pretty good year this year. A good year, boy. The best ever I see on this shore. The best in your lifetime? Yes, the best in my lifetime. Ever I see fish here. You mean the fish are more numerous or just because the price is better? No, the it? fish are more plentiful here and in this bay. Yeah. St. Peter's River to here, some areas, lots of fish. In a short while, we'll chat with some northern fishermen who flock to St. Mary's Bay, and we'll see what happens to all this fine fish. Lots of fish in St. Mary's Bay, the word trickled out. Seabees echoed the cry around the coast, and other fishermen began to work their way south. Some were from as far away as Labrador. What, what makes you consider this short for fishing? Well, uh, I heard about the fish over here, you know, and I figured I'd come over and check it out, so. If it looks good, I'll probably move the boat over. I see. What are you looking at now? What are you What are you considering today? Uh, well, I don't know. This is the first time I've been here, and uh, so I'm going to see how much fish is on the go and uh, what the weather is like, you know. And if it works out, I'll move the boat over. Yeah. Are you moving north to Labrador afterwards too? Uh, I would say in probably three weeks' time. Yeah, going to Fox Harbor. So you you really chase the fish, both of you, wherever you you go. Wherever oh you yes, go. I am the year. Yeah, this yeah. year. Yeah. We haven't seen too much here yet because the fog, you know, there's been a lot of fog here. Yeah. yeah. Now, I came out here this morning, my second time. We drove from in St. Mary's in a fish plant, and I hardly saw land. <laughs> I knew there was a lighthouse out here. Well, this is a foggy shore. Yeah, but... in a shoal, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had to go by the wind, really, and then the yeah. little swell was heaving in. That's something you're not used to from where you're from. I guess you don't get that much fog. Well, you get a lot of fog, oh, yes. Yeah. But you're used to the, the coast. Right. You yeah. know. You know the distance, you know, where you're going at. Yeah. Well, they, they make the fog here in the southern Avalon, that's what they say anyway. Well, they say it's, it's really bad here, you know, yeah. more so than anywhere, I yeah. think. But well, that won't stop you, once you get the... Well, I don't mind the fog if I can, uh, you know, get the fish. And so the Labrador men put on their oil skins and got ready to try the waters of St. Mary's Bay. A long way from home, not used to the grounds, but eager to get a share of the fish. This was a switch for sure. We're used to filming Newfoundland fishermen heading north to Labrador. This was the first time we filmed Labradorians come south in search of codfish. But what happened to all the fish landed by the boats of St. Mary's Bay this summer? Well, some of it went further in the bay to the plant at Riverhead. It's owned by Universal Fisheries, a Portuguese-based company that's taken over a large share of the fishery here in St. Mary's Bay. With the fondness that the Portuguese have for salt fish, it's not surprising that at least one of their plants would specialize in this product. A lot of the large fish was put under salt. Some of it came from the boats in Riverhead, some was trucked in from Gascos and Peters River and other places. Outside, a small flotilla of longliners. Some local boats, some from outside. Not too many yet, but more are expected to arrive tonight, drawn here by the news that the fish have struck in here in St. Mary's Bay. Unlike the crews in Gascos and Peters River, the fishermen in Riverhead fish from longliners. You can keep a longliner here in this sheltered reach of the bay. Actually, you probably need a larger vessel, for the fishing berths are a fair steam away.
Yes, here too the local fishermen have done well, but it hasn't been as good for the northern men. Some came from as far away as La Cie in White Bay. They were on their way to St. Lawrence when they heard there was fish in St. Mary's Bay, so they came in to try their luck. Skipper Max Ryan of the Jason and Ryan had just been paid for his week's landings, but he wasn't ready to crow about it. Max, I can, uh, I see you've got a check in your hand. I guess the fishery's not a complete blank here, is it? <laughs> At least I got one. <laughs> they don't say anything about what kind of figures is on it, though. <laughs> We've got a little. Uh, nothing great, but uh, managed to pick up five or six thousand some days, you know. I not every day, but. I suppose it must be a bit frustrating to see all the small boats in shore with the traps get, get the big hauls and you fellows uh, can't do that well with them. Yeah, some of the fellows with the traps have done really well, really well, really well, no doubt about it. What's the reason for that now? Why, why won't they net? Uh, I suppose that it's up through the water, you know, it's not down on the bottom. For a gill, as you know, it's only fathom and a half or something off the bottom. And they don't have to come up very far to the over thing. The way yep. it is with the cod trap, they got it right from the, the bottom to the surface, you know. And I suppose the people who live here have the best berths and uh, oh, know the grounds a bit better too. That's right, that's true. When we came here, all the places like you see the shoals where you would get fish. This time of the year when it's after the Cape, and you know, it, it was filled up with nits. We but didn't want to get involved, get in, tangle up the people belong here, you know, so. We could try to keep away from that a bit, so I guess uh, the places we, where we put our nits were where there was no nits. And I guess the reason why there was no nits there was it wasn't that good a place for fish. You know? But now if you get 5,000 pounds a day, four or 5,000, you, you'll, uh, you'll do okay. I wouldn't mind, yeah, I wouldn't mind. It, uh, I'd be satisfied with it. Yeah. But do you think it will pick up now? Do you think the fish will leave the traps and go to the gill nets after? This usually happens, yes. When the capelin gets gone, the fish usually settles on the bottom, you know. And this is what most of the people belong here, seems to think. So you're, you're living in hopes? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we may die in despair, but... <laughs> yeah, we're living in hopes. Yeah. Not far away in St. Mary's, the fresh fish plant, also owned by Universal. A busy place in early July. I'd said fishermen could sell all their small fish in this area this year. Here's why. A tunnel freezer that specializes in quick freezing small fillets. The small fish are all put to one side and fed into a filleting machine. It fillets so fast that it's a job for Teresa Malloy and Imelda White to keep up with it. I never thought I'd hear anybody in Newfoundland say when you can get enough small fish. It's usually a problem. Yeah, it's still a problem. What, a few, year, few years ago, there was too much of it. Yeah. And now there's, there's not enough of it, so. So you like to get the small fish? Yes, and even do. Yeah. Is that because you've got this machine now? Because of the machine, yes. Yeah. If you didn't have the machine, it'd be just like before, would it? If you didn't have the machine, it'd be like it was years ago, you'd still uh, be a problem? Oh, yeah, you'd still be thrown it away. And well, you're trying to get, to get what you could out of it. But. Tell me about the machine itself now. How does this operate? What well, is it? Uh, you see the girls there, you've seen them there. They feed it and they're doing a good job with it too. And, uh, well, it's a computerized machine that cuts 120 fish a minute, 240 fillets. Depending on the size of the fish, you know, anything under 18 inches down to 10, from 18 to 10 inches. And uh, do the fish that run around 17 or 18 inches, they cut probably 12 to 14,000 pounds an hour. But if it's down below 16, 14 inch fish, they'll cut around uh, 8 to 10,000 pounds an hour. Tell me about the nitrogen freezing machine you got here. Now. This one over here? Well, that's, that's quite new to us also. We just got installed there a couple of weeks ago. And it's a real good, real good machine. It's it, uh, a real good freezer. It's been a big boost to this plant for freezing. We. Uh, See the girls, they feed it down here in this end on a, on, a, on a belt and it comes out. 11 minutes later, it's frozen as hard as glass. This uh, is a good quality product. It's though, an excellent product. Uh, excellent. Is that what's preferred on the market it now, is, nitrogen yeah. frozen pellets? Yeah, it's, it's a big thing here. We can't we can freeze enough of it. We can sell everything, we can freeze with nitrogen, no problem at all. We can freeze, sell anything as well as we got here. but. This product is going over big in the UK right now. 
So this is the best quality fillet you can get this way? I would think so. I would think so. As you see, the fish don't be lying around the plant. It comes right off and right into the, into the tunnel. It's, it's almost alive and it's frozen. This has meant a lot to the fishermen here and I guess to the plant workers too, the fact that you can, you can, uh, you can now sell small fish. Well, the fishermen, the fishermen especially, I think. I think the fishermen are really pleased. I haven't had any complaints anyway. Years ago, now, how much the fish was thrown away at this time of the year? What percentage of the catch would you say? I, I, would, I would say anywhere around 20% sometimes, maybe more, maybe more than that. You know, just dump. Just picking it out and throwing it over, see, floating up the harbor there. It was heartening to learn that the sickening practice of dumping small fish has died. At least here in this part of the island. The dumping of small fish, besides being terribly wasteful, was discouraging to fishermen who couldn't control the size of the fish that swam into their traps. One well-known fisherman here in St. Mary's Bay is Jim Corcoran. We were going to go out fishing with him, but spent so much time with the fellows in Gaskers that we missed our ride. However, as you can see, Jim and his crew didn't really need our help. Later, we found Jim out patching up a dory and talked with him about the fishery. How much fish did you have today? Not too much today, about 8,000. Well, most parts of Newfoundland, that would be considered a pretty good day's pay. But here, I believe you've been doing better than that. Oh, God, yes. And people have been doing a lot better than me, too. Well, what kind of landings now have been taken up here in St. Mary's Bay this year? Fairly good since about uh, middle of June. There were some before that, you know, uh, four and five and six, seven thousand. Eh? Yeah. But after that, it started to pick up. What do you call fairly good? Now, what's, what's a good day on the water here? Well, 20 or 25,000 pounds. That's for trap boats now, or, or, and, and the big longliners too? Well, longliners, I'd say, you know, when not a small trap boats, they can make probably two or three trips. and They'll do about the same, but not every day. That's, you yeah. know, certain days of the week, I guess. What's, what's the most you heard taken up here now by your crew in the day? Uh, in, in, the long, in the long liners, I believe it was the other night, uh, one guy had around 90,000. 90,000 pounds yeah. of fish in one day? That's right. No, he didn't take that all. He had to, he didn't take that aboard. He took, uh, yeah, he filled his hold and he filled the deck and he towed in a bag. He towed in about uh, thirty-five thousand. Is it always as good as that here in St Mary's Bay? You better be careful how you answer. <laughs> I, 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 I wish it was. <laughs> You'll have every fisherman in Newfoundland here. No, not really. Last year was fairly good. There were some good catches last year and uh, this year, and I was a bit later starting this year, and uh, but it was, you know, it's been fairly good. The problem here in the last few years was. Uh, you couldn't sell anything under 16 inches. So that's why a lot of people got away from trapping. Eh? This is our first year trapping now in six years. Really? Oh, yeah. Before you had to throw away your small. Well, that's right. You couldn't sell it, you know. Or you get into it, you had to got it or something like that. And, but any type of catches, you know, any anything over 10,000 pounds, you're certainly not going to got it. You know, you only end up with a bit of hash. That's what you'd have when you come in. And no problem this year? Not yet, anyway. I'm even expecting the price to go up. Seeing they're not getting fish anywhere else. Well, the price did inch up, a cent a pound, after the traps were all up. The fishermen of St. Mary's Bay didn't end up with quite as much fish as they expected. Yet with three crews landing one million pounds in five weeks, the Gaskers fishermen were pretty happy. So was, uh, the fishery is uh, pretty bright here in Gaskers. Guarantee you, buddy. <laughs> a good thing for this bay, I tell you.